Out of the desolation of Odalathrain, in the dead heart of Iceland, rises the mountain range of Dingjofjall, enclosing a great caldera named Askja. In 1875, an explosive eruption took place on a vast scale. The finest ash was carried as far as Stockholm. Most of the pumice came from the explosion crater Viti, which is about a hundred yards in diameter. After the eruption of 1875, a new caldera was formed inside Askja, now for the most part filled by the waters of Askja Lake. Beside this lake, some small flows of lava appeared during the years 1921 to 24. Here is one of them, Bautsrein, formed in 1921. Here we look out through the gap called Öskjaö. Just to the south of this, at a place marked on the map with a cross, a considerable lava eruption began on the 26th of October, 1961. From the tourist hut at Herdebredalindir, we travel by car towards the volcano. Here, the smoking edge of the lava flow can be seen, more than five miles from its source. It advances here in the form of block lava, similar to that of the 1947 Hekla eruption. Scoria and lumps of hardened lava tumble constantly from its edge, but underneath there is a glowing river of viscous pumice that creeps slowly forward. And now we see the craters on the eruption fissure that runs from east to west a short way to the south of Öskjörup. They have already built up cones about them, from cinders and lumps of lava. And from them, columns of glowing molten lava are thrown up. In scientific circles, these are called lava fountains, and are best known from the eruptions in Hawaii. From these fiery columns, some of the ash and cinders falls back on the cones, continually enlarging them, while to the north of the crater runs a swiftly moving river of lava, that has broken a gap in the wall. Here we get a good view of the lava gushing forth. Up here, the winter is severe, for we are more than 3,000 feet above sea level. Here, men can experience the extremes of ice and fire that have long been characteristic of this land. To most, the first sight of the glowing edge of the lava is an unforgettable one. It is pleasant to stand at a suitable distance from it and enjoy the heat while you watch the ever-changing front as large fragments break from the glowing face. The craters are veiled in a haze of smoke and vapor that can be dimly seen. The lava fountains have almost stopped now and the eruption from the craters is of the kind associated with Stromboli. Here the new lava runs along the snow-covered slope, turning the snow into steam. Here we see a typical stretch of ropey lava. And here, for the first time recorded on film, we can see how ropey lava is formed in Iceland. This lava runs here from the craters in comparatively narrow channels, sometimes open and sometimes closed, rushing along them at a speed of many feet per second. 
Here and there, it breaks out of its channels and pours over the rugged surface of the older block lava. One can see quite clearly how the so-called ropey effect appears on the surface as the viscous crust forms into folds. From time to time, the lava streams are almost completely hidden by a black layer. Then they strip it off themselves and appear glowing again. Here it's easy to scoop out a soft lump of molten lava and mold it at will to make a souvenir. Among the most impressive sights of all are the lava pools which form from time to time in the main flow. Sometimes they harden and become black. But before long, the gases from the liquid underneath manage to lift the crust, breaking it into many fragments that shower down into the fiery pool and then shoot up again like spray. To watch it reminds one of a school of porpoises at play. Then the pool settles and gets dark until the whole performance is repeated once more. We now bid goodbye to these roaring red rivers of fire and make our way back to Herdebreda Lindir. But during the summer of 1962, we return once more to Öskjaup. The eruption in the craters, named Vekragiyu, ceased in December of 1961, but they are still smoking. Bye.
The lava nearest to them is mostly of the ropey kind. The streams that once glowed so brightly have now hardened with a rope-like surface. But the deposits of sulphur and other chemicals are a pleasure to the eye in many places, and some of the crater vents are a fairy tale of colours. And so we return beside the lava, which is the most recent of those many streams that have flowed out through Oskarop.